So hello there, in this video I will show you the progress of my breeding project with Samia Rizzini, the Eri Silk Moth, with Anterea Perni, the Oak Silk Moth with Otacus Atlas and with Gunimbrasia Zambesina, uh, the Mopani Worm of Africa. But let's start first with Samia Rizzini, that's our famous Eri Silk Worm. And uh, now here we have uh, sexed around 20 uh, cocoons, uh, pupas, and we wanted to be sure um, whether this, the way we sex them is effectively true. And I have a look here what we have written on this little paper here. We have written Frau, that's woman. So this must be female, and what we can see here it's perfectly true because we see the eggs here that they already laid. And then in the other box here we have the, the other pupas that we have written males on it and now we have to make pairs with them so that the eggs are fertilized because this one in this cage here they are of course not fertilized because probably the females are already a little bit too old and we have to hurry up that they can uh, mate and pair and and lay the eggs afterwards. What I do, I put some of the uh, some kind of leaves in here so they, that they can hang around here and then I put two females and two males into every of this box so that they can mate here and lay their eggs. And first of course I take out uh, female from here in this box. What you can see here are the, the drops of the so-called meconium. That's uh, the, the color here that you can see. This is made by the by the but the flies as soon as they have finished their enclosure process as an adult and as, they, as soon as they have spread their wings they give out all the fluid that they don't use anymore as an adult. Most uh, this is material that uh, is kind of a waste material from the uh, metabolism during the life stage of the pupa. So only when the butterfly has given out this meconium uh, it can fly away but of course Samioritini is a very very old uh, cultivated um, butterfly so it don't, doesn't fly around anymore actively especially not in these temperatures here look it's a nice female and I put, just put it here on this and of course these are unfertilized eggs I cannot do anything with them and then I take out the male from here put it next to her like this yeah and I take another female probably the one that is already trying to lay their eggs here like this and the second uh, male from here so that's perfect so we have the first two pairs in this box I don't add too much of paper now because uh, if they lay the eggs on the paper is some kind of difficult to take them away because they stick very well to the surface where they are laid on and um, yeah it's better to let them lay their eggs on the plastic cage or on the little uh, branches of ligustrum that I put into this. Now you see on the bottom one of the butterflies has emitted the meconium here so that these are the these uh, brownish drops that you will see here. What you can do is put the paper on top and and wet the paper a little bit because as you probably know uh, the pheromone that the females emit to attract the males they work best in a wet surrounding but with higher humidity so they can smell each other better when it's a little bit wet like this. Now let's see whether we can show you the, the difference between a male and a female just here on the table because it's also said that you can see the difference between a male and a female on the, at, in the shape of the wings. So the male's wings should be a bit more falcate like this one here 
and the male and the wings of the females mostly they are just broader so like this one here and I think here you can see a little bit the difference between the female here and the male if you look at the antennas that is really difficult to see I also thought let's have a look at the antennas whether we can see the difference between the male and the female in the antennas but this is really difficult to see probably you but probably if you are very good and have a good eye you can see that the male here has broader antennas than the female in the middle you can see this antenna here is from the male and that's only from the female yes here I think you can see that pretty clearly here in this picture but that's also kind of a of a method to check whether they are males or females but of course if you want to have a, um, a cultivation process it's good to open the cocoons and see whether it's a male or a female now I make the same again just put in some of these twigs of and then I put the male here and the female next to it like this so they can meet here make a nice pair and I put the second pair in here this is the female like here she also emitted the meconium now here that's mostly when they are a little bit nervous also and here is another nice male and, and cover it with a paper that is a little bit wet and then of course we also would like to know how many eggs they lay in from this this is a culture uh, from the winter time Lolo de Valier has finished this uh, cultivating process um, and um, we, we, we were fed with Prunus Lauro Terasus we want to know how many eggs they lay and how many of the pupas we need to produce a certain amount of caterpillars later yeah that's the job now for some of uh, Ricini two of the other boxes I opened then in the German channel as a uh, playlist as you know probably I make always a German and an English um, a film for the different playlists in German or in English.